Hello and welcome to Man Plus Studio Daily Drive. Today we're going to be talking about how to choose your microphone for your studio application and uh, essentially some of the mic specs that you should be looking for when you're choosing a microphone in the studio. Now I think one of the most promising things about being a studio engineer is that you get to work with some of the best equipment in the world and one of those items happens to be your microphone and your microphone locker in any given studio situation usually typically ends up being the most expensive element outside of the console you know and the most prized elements in your studio now you know barring that some you know some people keep some really high-end outboard gear but in most cases your mic locker really represents your studio's quality. So it's very important to know what kind of microphones to choose and what's really gonna work for you. Now in today's modern age, I don't typically advise people to go out and spend three to five grand on a single mic, you know, in order to be able to get that mic locker beefed up. I think what's most important is, is that you find mics that are, that are well balanced and that suit your, your current needs and that actually fit with your studio model. You know, so if your studio model is essentially you just record voiceovers, you know, then you're really going to want to get and choose a really solid microphone for those voiceovers. But you can also understand that your mic locker doesn't really need to be that deep. Whereas if you're recording music, of course, you're going to want to ideally have a nice array of microphone choices. And technically, you don't even have to own all of them. A lot of studios will, uh, on certain occasions, have to rent certain microphones. And if a specific artist comes in and wants a specific mic, sometimes they'll even have that on hand as part of their normal uh, arsenal of what they bring into the studio. So, you know, don't freak out over that as well. I think the big key here is just understanding what you're looking for when you're choosing a microphone. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Now, first I'm gonna say this. One of the things you have to ask yourself is what kind of application do you are you looking for? What kind of application array are you really seeing in your studio? You know, um, some people will only record uh, vocals, you know, or things that really do have to do more with the voice. So, you know, a basic standard uh, condenser uh, microphone with a cardioid pattern might be perfect for them, you know. Um, for other individuals, they, they may just have a whole, you know, they may need something that does more uh, well-rounded jobs for a lot of different applications. You know, so finding a mic that can do almost all of those things and sound great doing it can be a little bit more tricky. You know, so one of the keys that you have to look at here is, you know, uh, what are the reputations of the mic? How long has the microphone been out? Is it more of a fad or a phase? Uh, is there a lot of undue hype around it when you're doing your research? You know, and, and when you're kind of dialing into your overall research, you'll find that there's an easy list of go-to microphones that have been around for a very long time. They've stood the test of time, and, and every major engineer will swear by them. Um, but at the same time, we're in an interesting market right now with the industry where there are uh, these brand new manufacturers of microphones that are just cropping up and, and just jumping leagues ahead of some of these guys that have already been here forever. A uh, great example is Audix. Uh, Audix has not been around for very long, but you know, Audix introduced a line of mics and by far surpassing uh, what a lot of the industry had been, been using was the Audix D6, um, which is a kick mic. You know, so you're going to find some manufacturers are, are going to, you know, be popping up and some newer, newer manufacturers are going to be blowing our minds. So one of those uh, manufacturers actually is, in my suggestion, because I've been working with an array of microphones, is the SE Electronics um, VR2, the Voodoo. Essentially, it's a ribbon microphone and it's a modern rib ribbon microphone and it's great for use in overall applications. So acoustic guitar, piano, vocals, uh, electric guitar, it sounds really, really mean. And one of the big key elements about this is unlike most ribbon microphones, um, the sensitivity is there, but it actually has a higher max SPL. Now, that kind of takes us to some details we need to talk about if you don't know what terminology I'm using here. But overall, that's a great mic to have as a single. If I had to go buy one mic that could do all these jobs, it could do it well. I, I would probably go with that. Now, one big key about that is that particular mic, the SE Voodoo, actually uses a figure eight pattern, um, just as all ribbon microphones do. And one of the things you have to kind of consider in that factor is the fact that a, a, a ribbon microphone with a figure eight pattern is designed to not only keep, capture the the actual source audio from one side, but it also captures ambience of the room from the other side. But one of the huge benefits is that that figure eight is a ribbon, so 
when it's capturing these frequencies of the ambient room, you know, it, it's, it really pays off to have a really solid room. So like at the studio that I'm at, of course, we have a great live room and has all these beautiful tones. But it really helps to have, you know, that ribbon microphone style because unlike a standard uh, condenser microphone, you know, uh, the condenser microphone doesn't have that richness to it. So when it's capturing a figure eight pattern, there's a lot of EQing and detailing you're going to have to work with in order to make that those ambient sounds sound natural. You know, so on a ribbon mic, it really dials in that smoothness because it, it really doesn't take in these kinds of frequencies that are harsh. You know, so it's great for electric guitar to get that room kind of amp sound instead of putting a reverb plate on there. You know, you're really capturing the, the ambience of the room as it's as it's moving with the tone of the guitar. You know, and it works well for vocals as well. You know, what we like to do is baffle uh, right behind the microphone about four to six feet. So, you know, on the other side of the microphone where the, where the vocalist is not, we're actually still cutting down on those uh, ambient room tones, you know, by putting up a, a baffler or a gobo, you know, and, and just making sure that the room's not too live. So those are great overall microphones. And you may just decide, you know what, I, I, I found a really, really solid, uh, like AKG, I love the AKG line. They have everything from $100 mics, uh, condenser uh, studio mics, all the way up to the seven, $800. And of course the $1,400, their standard 414s. Um, you know, but you're, with those microphones, a lot of the AKG line, you can find a really solid condenser microphone that has either multi-patterns or just a solid cardioid pattern. You know, and that one can be your one uh, overall ideal microphone. Now, I always suggest when you're going to buy an overall microphone, always get two because when you're working with acoustic guitar, you want matched pair stereo stuff. When you're working with piano, you want matched pair, uh, matched pair of microphones um, that are, you're able to capture those sources and stereo, things like that. You know, so a lot of times you will do that. But if you're going to go below $5,000 on a, a really high-end microphone, obviously you're probably just going to get one. You know, so that's kind of one of those things you have to look at when you're budgeting. But let's talk about the specs because the specs and how to choose the microphone for your application is is really specific. Um, there are a handful of specs that are that actually kind of focus on studio microphone applications. But let's talk about what makes a studio mic work and 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 what makes a studio mic a studio mic versus some of the live microphone options that you can choose. Well, in reality, what we're looking for for a studio microphone is we want something that can handle a lot of times a high SPL, which essentially is the sound pressure level, a high SPL max. And, and the SPL max just means the sound pressure level maximum limit that the microphone can take in before distortion. And so what that means is that, you know, um, with a microphone with too low of a max SPL, you drop that in front of a vocalist and they will distort the microphone before it ever leaves the microphone, which is not a good quality signal to be using. So a lot of times, you know, what you're paying for when you're, when you're buying these, you know, more expensive microphones is you're, you're paying for that extra bit of headroom on the mic itself before it goes out to the output, which will allow it to have a nice, clean, pristine, uh, solid signal. So the max SPL is like huge in the studio. One of the other things you're looking at is sensitivity ratings. And the sensitivity rating essentially is going to be, you know, how much is that microphone going to pick up? And that's where the real difference is between a lot of the live microphone applications. You know, the live microphones have to have some sensitivity, of course, but uh, an overall um, high end of sensitivity would be very bad for uh, the live application because of feedback and, and bleed on the stage and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, a lot of times we're looking at microphones that have a, a higher level of sensitivity. Um, you know, in addition to that, you kind of have to talk about, uh, you know, some of the overall basics of the microphone, how mechanically it works. So you're looking at your basic microphone types. You know, you have uh, the basic condenser microphone, um, which essentially is is just uh, the moving coil concept. Uh, or I'm sorry, I, I mentioned the condenser. I'm sorry, we're talking about the, the condenser plate, a microphone. Uh, otherwise, the dynamic microphones, sorry, excuse me, um, are using the, the moving uh, the moving coil uh, technique. And the difference between those two is a dynamic mic versus a condenser microphone it is really max SPL in the, in the overall range. Um, so dynamic mics typically can take in a higher max X, X, uh, SPL. And then the dynamic microphones also, though, have a lower sensitivity because of that. So dynamic mics a lot of times are most suitable for uh, guitar amps, bass amps, and of course drums, the heavy hitters, the guys that are really going to be breaching that max SPL. 
you know, so you have your dynamic microphone category, and then you have your condenser microphone category, and that's really where we live a lot in the studio. So the majority of our microphones that we're going to use in the studio are going to be condenser mics, and and the real difference is is they have a higher sensitivity, uh, but they but they do have a, a bit of a lower max SPL. One way around that typically is just giving your mic a little bit of space from the source, um, or maybe just turning down the source if it's just an amp, you know. Um, but in, in most cases, the condenser mic is king in the studio, and, and there's a lot of variations of how the condenser mics are set up. So there's a lot of manufacturers out there that, that do different things with their condenser microphone to get that tone and to get that richness. Um, you know, uh, in addition to that, of course, then we have the ribbon mic. Um, and then the ribbon mic is more of an old school idea, but the modern ribbon mics are very, very impressive. I think the, the downside, the reason most people were avoiding ribbon mics to begin with was basically because of the fact that they were fragile and over time the ribbons would begin to sag and it would cause a problem with the, the overall um, quality of the signal. So, you know, they'd become unusable after a certain period of time. So a lot of the problems with the ribbon mics were really based upon maintenance. So in the modern day, a lot of these ribbon mics are built better. They're built with better and more solid uh, ribbon components. You know, in reality, they'll last longer. You know, uh, the other thing is, is they're cheaper than they used to be. So, you know, if one does die, replacement is, is a lot more realistic than it would have been, you know, 30, 40 years ago. You know, so then, I mean, there are some other additional microphone types. Uh, the boundary mics, the PZM, uh, very useful inside of a kick drum. People, people like to experiment with those, you know, in different ways. Um, you know, sometimes if you don't have a talkback mic, a boundary mic might be good to just throw out somewhere. So it's catching everything as you're trying to talk back into the booth. Uh, you know, so th that kind of works out just fine. You know, but then we have to talk about, on top of that, we have to talk about the, the actual patterns that the microphones use as their pickups. So the pickup pattern, or, or what they'll call the, the polar pattern, which is which will show a three, three dimensional, what does the mic pick up and how does it do it and what kind of range. You know, so a lot of times you, you know, the standard cardioid pattern shaped like a heart, it, it's gonna pick up in the front of the mic and it's gonna reject on the back end of the mic is your very popular choice. Outside of that, you can really use figure eights to kind of catch the ambience. You know, a lot of times the omnis aren't as realistic in the studio. That's just picking up way too much, you know, everywhere, you know, and I think that that's just one of those things where, um, you know, it, it depends on what kind of space you're in. Um, you know, you're gonna catch a little more early reflections using the Omni. You know, so a lot of times the figure eight is actually the much more popular choice. But in reality, when you're trying to choose your microphone, you know, overall, you're looking for the highest max SPL that you can afford um, that'll work for you. And then you're looking for the, you know, a nice, probably a cardioid um, condenser microphone for the studio. And then the biggest last thing that is like the key, the ultimate key is the frequency response. The frequency response on a microphone is a rating that details how the microphone will pick up and what frequencies will be included on average. And it's just an average test, but the frequency response characteristics are super, super key. You'll find if you go and you open up a bunch of manuals, you take a $100 mic and a $500 mic and a $1,000 mic and a $5,000 mic, and you side-by-side -side all of their frequency responses, what you'll see typically is as the price goes up, the response becomes flatter, and it extends further from the 20 hertz to the 20,000 hertz range, so from high to low very evenly. So that's kind of like the additional element you kind of have to look at, it, and what's the frequency response range that you're really looking for. Now, the biggest keys here is you will absolutely need a really pristine frequency response if you're going to record strings, if you're going to record that more orchestral, just very natural open sound, if you're going to record uh, uh, a grand piano, things that are on the more pristine end that are going to take a lot less processing in the mix down and that you would expect less processing for on the mix down. Once you get into the range of we're working with vocals and you're working with electric guitar and, and things like that that are a little more modern and edgy that, you're, that you may end up processing quite a bit, then you can kind of relax about the frequency response and the high and the low end and you kind of really look at what's going on in the middle. And you're really hoping that in the middle you're not getting these uh, unnatural mid-range uh, peaks or spikes in your frequency response because that's really the heart and soul of it. And a lot of times what you're looking for as an engineer is you want to be able to record your stuff and not have to do all this tailoring in the mix down. You know, but a part of that also comes down to what kind of preamp you're running to. You know, so like after the microphone, because the microphone's like the beginning of your sound source. You know, after the microphone, you're hitting into the preamp, and that's kind of where things also get a little tricky. So you're gonna you have to kind of keep in mind that your preamp will also be determining how the overall sound quality is. But a lot of guys that I see that are looking at their recordings going, well, I wanted my recording to sound like this or to emulate this. You know, a lot of the real differences 
more than just the console they're using and more than just who did the mix or what the mix down was done on, um, in, in addition to the room acoustics, is really what kind of microphone ch choices are they using? The microphone choices that a lot of the higher end guys are using, I mean, they're using these microphones that are just tailored and, and they're sweetened for that sound. So what I always suggest is, hey, look, you know, do your research, try out some mics, if you don't like them, take them back. You know, if you if you if you're not if you don't have a really good gut feeling about them right away, take them back. Get them, you know, replace them out with something else. And then once you find that really nice, smooth and wonderful selection of microphones, stick with it. You know, and really put some time and energy into using those microphones. You get really good at understanding how the microphone translates from in the studio to at the mix down to to final mix. And then when you hear it in your car or you hear it on a stereo or you hear it on your iPod you know, and you understand how it really translates, you know, and then you can really start to make judgment calls. And the one thing I always suggest to people that are buying new mics, it's not a, unfortunately, I wish it was the, the, the industry for studio recording is not a, if you build it, they will come kind of industry. Unfortunately, the industry is really based upon you already having those individuals. So you want your microphone selections to grow with your clientele or your roster you don't want to just go out and spend a ton of money on, on your microphones and then just hope that you're going to magically get this roster. People typically lean towards working with uh, people who already they already have a tracker group with and have some sort of quality or success with. So that's super key. All right, I'm going to have some more info for you coming up next, and I will see you tomorrow. Be sure to check back for all new episodes, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow our blog at manplusstudio.blogspot.com.